there was hardly any any art galleries or otherwise here in the 80s. It's you know this is an explosion of uh, you know art being popular with, with that with this with the other few galleries that are in town. I moved to this town and I met a person in the art league and and he said we well, ought to come to the art league and so in 78 you know they had a meeting at the library and I went and joined and been a member ever since. It's a great experiment. I, 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 I hope that we just grow and grow and grow and we don't become a, a craft store. And we're gonna have workshops here that we'll have open space where we'll have an instructor, we hope, and you know, learn different techniques, which you, you can't grow unless you do. So, as an artist, yeah. <laughs> or as a maker, I call myself a maker. I kind of faded back when, when we started taking over Art Squared. I'd been doing it for so long, the Art League trying to keep it going. I, th I think I've been the president, the, the secretary, the treasurer, uh, every, and multiple times over the years. Now, today, I do scanner grams, and I put objects on my scanner, and then leave the lid open and turn all the lights off in the room, and scan it at a high resolution, so it's a photographic image, but it's not made with a camera. I don't care what media it is. If I've decided to do something, and it's if I, if I have uh, oil paints there, or if I have clay, or if I if I, if I have enough of this handy, and I've decided to make something, then I use what I have. It was never about selling. It's never been about selling. It's been about the process. And it's been about being a maker and not a seller. I'm Riley McCaffrey. Um, I'm 22. I'm a hairdresser here in St. Marcus. I've been getting tattoos since the day I turned 18. Um, most of them are like the traditional style, which is more bold lines, bold colors, kind of more based off of Sailor Jerry tattoos, which are things that sailors used to get as like marks of achievements. A lot of my newer tattoos I've been getting from Frank Hinojosa here at the Tattoo Emporium. I am. Um, I think this kind of business is very much word of mouth, and that's how you find the best of the best. Definitely has that kind of flair, a little something different, and I think it's cool because other people who get tattoos, they see my tattoos and they're like, oh, Frank did that, you know? It's something very unique to him and his art. My favorite one is the clown that Frank Hinojosa did on the back of my uh, cap. And my least favorite one is the one that just got covered up by Frank Hinojosa today and is now this beautiful prey mantis. They're definitely more accepted here than they are in other parts of Texas. Like I'm from a very conservative town and it's not as it's not as okay there. But when I come here, it's like most people have them, and if not, they're a fan of them. St. Marcus itself, there's a lot of tattoo artists and there's a lot of like art going on, so they're a lot more accepted in this area for sure. My name is Tim DeYoung. I'm the owner of Wimberly Glassworks. Uh, a lot of people in San Marcos don't think we're in San Marcos, but we're in San Marcos. So I actually built it here uh, as a gateway and a link between the two cities. It's important to me because if we both work together and both communities work together, we all succeed. Um, started out here with an internship and I got it through the website Cats Web that Texas State has. I found this one and I applied to it and I got it and right after I graduated they actually asked me to come on full time as a marketing assistant here. And we have um, a bunch of different collections out here that everybody can come and look at and they're all unique on their own. They all have different stories to tell. The Emerald Ocean is my favorite pattern here and I really like it because it's just so vibrant and really reminds me of the ocean. Uh, every design has inspiration, usually from nature. Uh, one of the main reasons why I moved to this area. You can, you can find something new every couple months around here. Recently we did our monster making contest and we involved local schools in the area to make a monster and they all submitted it. The kids got to come out, sit in the hot shop and our three glass blowers um, actually made it in front of them and they, you know, talked to them and told them what they were doing. We get raw material, we shovel it into the furnace on Tuesday. Uh, it takes all day to fill the furnace. And 
uh, then we take the rest of the week to use it. I quit my day job a couple years ago and just been doing this for the past two or three years. And it's been working out so far. But it's my passion, that's, that's kind of what I'm going for. And I know that's what I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. I'm kind of known for my cat art. Um, I like to paint a lot of animals. I like to paint San Marcos. I like to uh, paint the river. It's just kind of my life. I started painting San Marcos scenes and adding animals to it. Um, I focus a lot on my cats at home now. And I like to say they're, they live in San Marcos, they live part of San Marcos. Uh, or I'll sit by the river, or I'll sit here at Blue Dahlia. The thing I've been doing lately is just going to different spots around town, and just sitting there and painting little, you've seen the little ones I paint and I hold up, they kind of like blend into the background. That's been really fun because it's like, it's handheld, I could just take a little block and just paint on that. I get the paint, the little canvas, the little block, and I hold it up to where, say I'm painting the courthouse, I'll, I'll hold it up and, I'll, and you can bring it closer, further away, and so it frames what you want. And then once you have, you have that frame, and I'm like, okay, there's the arch right there. So then I try to, then I just get the, the paint and I, I paint the arch. And I, I go back just to get the dimension right. And then I add the color and all that. I've been painting in my, in my room, my home studio for 10 years. And I've never really painted anything on the street. And my friend at Vagabond asked me to paint there one time. And I painted a cat back there. And then I started working back here at the back of Blue Dahlia, adding little paintings in there. I guess the city kind of saw what I was doing, so the city asked me if I could paint 10, find 10 locations throughout town that I like to paint and put something, paint a mini mural. I like personal, like, this is fun. I could do these little paintings and, and I could go anywhere. And, and, and I, I, say, I, ask, I go up to the owner of the building, I'm like, hey, can I, can I paint a little butterfly cat? <laughs> and they kind of look at because I went to some of the taquerias, like La Fonda and Rogelio's there, or like, I kind of asked them that question. They kind of looked at me kind of weird. They're like, what do you want to do that for? I'm like, I don't know. I just kind of do this stuff. And so they, they, they let me do that. And, and it's like, nobody says no to that. It's real small. It's not going to like, hardly anybody's going to notice it. But it adds to my little collection. It's, I think the smaller and the more hidden, the better. Yeah. It, I, like, I like for it to kind of jump out at you when you're right, right on it. And, oh. <laughs> and, uh, I don't even know what I'm doing. Usually I just start painting and something comes out. And a lot of those ones paintings where I take them and paint them on the location. I kind of like to say they're kind of boring because they're like just landscape paintings. So a lot of the times I, I take it back home and I add something to them. And sometimes it, and I just keep on going until I'm happy because sometimes things don't look right. And, but they always look right at the end, so most of the time.